The introductory guide sets out the background and research framework for the Financial Protection Service. The Financial Protection Service was instigated following the 2015 Queensland Government inquiry into the adequacy of existing financial protections for Queensland seniors. You can find the report on the Queensland Parliament website. The inquiry recommend that the Queensland Government investigate ways to better facilitate vulnerable older Queenslanders access to and uptake of free and independent financial advice. The Financial Protection Service is provided to middle-aged Queenslanders who are approaching retirement and undertaking financial decision-making for later life. It's an information and referral service that aims to increase access to free and independent information and advice services. It addresses vulnerability to financial abuse and financial exclusion. In early discussions between Caxton Legal Centre, Townsville Community Legal Service and the Department of Communities, the concept of prevention through discussion was devised. Building from these early foundations, the Financial Protection Service is to be delivered by service partners in the legal, social work, financial counselling and mediation services who will reach into communities and engage with older persons through conversation. We know that older Australians are a demographic less likely to take action through general information and education initiatives, and they benefit from tailored initiatives that reach into the community. The 2012 law survey posited that lower reporting of legal issues in the older age demographic may be due to a failure to identify legal needs and a reluctance to complain. In the same way, obstacles to accessing financial information and services may include confusion, inertia, or a failure to perceive the need for financial products and services. The Financial Protection Service is a best practice and initiative which emphasises conversation through outreach and screening as essential precursors to the effective referral and uptake of financial information and advice. The role of community-based service partners is essential for the effective provision of the Financial Protection Services. You'll see the contact details of all department services listed on this slide. The service encompasses outreach, in-house services, screening, referral and education. Outreach will occur in the community at locations and in a format to be determined by service partners. In most cases, it's expected that outreach will be used to deliver financial information, conduct informal screening and make referrals. The Financial Protection Service is not a legal advice or casework service, although it can be delivered in conjunction with those services. The Outreach Guide will help service providers decide what outreach model best suits their community and funding arrangements. In-house services will occur in the usual course of service partner operations, where an older person is referred during outreach or approaches the service partner directly. Older persons will need to become clients of the service partner before in-house services are delivered. In-house services will include formal screening and referral, and any co-delivered services that service partners ordinarily offer. For example, legal, social work and mediation. Service users will be both informally and formally screened for financial abuse, with a focus on financial abuse and relationships of trust. We're expecting that informal screening will occur during outreach and formal screening during in-house services. The screening guide explains the types of screening processes. Education includes the Financial Abuse Awareness Training Package, which is a series of free CPD webinars aimed at professionals in the finance sector. Key deliverables of the service are to facilitate access to free and independent information and advice. Our underlying aim is to increase financial resilience by improving knowledge on key financial decisions, triggering thinking and providing supported referral and increasing the capacity of older persons to make autonomous financial decisions, including by having choice and control over decisions executed by third parties on their behalf. We're also actively screening for financial abuse, recommending protective financial behaviours, and offering protective referrals where financial abuse is occurring. At the time of publication, the Australian Institute of Family Studies is in the process of developing a national definition for the term elder abuse. 
Until this definition is settled, we are adopting the approach of Justin and viewing any definition as descriptive rather than prescriptive. You can read our adopted definitions on this slide and in the introductory guide. The Financial Protection Service focuses on financial abuse within a relationship of trust, as opposed to non-personal forms of abuse such as scams or online fraud. However, we accept that financial abuse occurs within relationships of trust and more broadly. The Guides and Practice Manual also use a number of preferred terms. These are listed on the slide and include older persons instead of senior, elder or elderly, elder abuse incorporating elder mistreatment and elder maltreatment, financial abuse is a subset of elder abuse and incorporating elder financial abuse, financial exploitation and material abuse. Economic abuse is a subset of domestic and family violence. You can see more important definitions in the key terms section, including res with respect to guidance on class counting for seniors legal and support services. I will now briefly cover some of the central concepts that underpin financial abuse. How financial abuse is defined by lawyers, researchers and policymakers is often at odds with how the community and older persons themselves see financial abuse. Legal policy and research-based definitions focus on acts of harm within a relationship of trust, including misappropriation or mismanagement of money, property or financial resources. Older persons are more likely to focus on non-personal financial abuse such as scams and fraud, Within families, what is perceived as abusive will vary according to different social, cultural, familial and generational expectations and attitudes about appropriate financial transactions within families, according to Michal Jacek. This means that no universal warning signs exist that may lead an older person to wanting to obtain more financial skills and autonomy. For service providers, it will be important to adapt service provision to how older persons understand and describe financial abuse through the conversation and screening processes. Financial abuse is the result of complex interactions between older persons and individuals in their life. No single risk factor explains why some older people are more susceptible than others. It's often the interplay of characteristics that results in increased vulnerability. Risk factors for older persons include age-associated vulnerability such as cognitive changes, illness, impaired mobility, mental illness and social isolation, behavioural triggers such as changes in functional status, so for example moving into assisted living, accidents and difficulty with communication. Loss of autonomy and independence often coincide with and are intrinsically linked with financial abuse. And finally, older persons are at heightened risk of denial or restriction of their legal capacity. Formal and informal barriers to exercising legal capacity based on stereotypes associated with older persons may undermine the rights of all older persons to have adequate and appropriate support for decision making and lead to abuse. Older persons as poly victims and economic abuse are distinct subsets of risk and vulnerability discussed in the introductory guide. Financial losses later in life have particularly significant impacts with even small amounts of financial abuse being catastrophic, especially for those on limited incomes. Other impacts include increased mortality and a range of adverse health outcomes, including depression and dementia, according to Bitondo. Barriers to detection listed by Anitzberger are complexity, awareness, definitional and recognition factors. According to Daly, key challenges are, include gaining access to the private domain of family behaviour. Conrad reminds us that the onset of financial abuse is often gradual and insidious and lacking oversight, subtle deception may mimic legitimate transactions and escalate over time. How older persons define financial abuse may be an additional barrier to detection. Financial decisions in older life bring, bring particular challenges and gravity. Peter Kell, former commissioner at ASIC, described financial decision making as having features that make consumer choice difficult and are essential for participation in the modern economy. 
Neurologists have described middle-aged adults as being at a decision-making sweet spot for financial decisions, as they have a substantial practical experience without having suffered significant declines in inte fluid intelligence. And fluid intelligence encompasses things like working memory and future planning. Adopting an applied ecological approach, which we'll discuss further shortly, the Financial Protection Service views retirement as a relational transition where experiences and decision-making are particularly influenced by close networks and family. Family is also the most influential group that develops an individual's financial behaviours, according to Kim. It is therefore essential to understand and acknowledge that financial decision-making arises within a unique family decision system. It's important to view older persons as embedded with the fam within the family environment and pay close attention to how the individual interacts with their family and how the interrelationship influences functioning over time. This may be revealed through conversation and screening. Family financial arrangements, such as assets for care arrangements, may be complex and not easily unpicked even by the older person themselves. Older persons may choose inaction instead of negotiating differences over financial choices with family members. We have identified six key decision-making areas for older persons, drawn from the Financial Protections for Seniors, Queensland Seniors Inquiry, the Australian Law Reform Commission Elder Abuse and National Legal Response Final Report, the practice knowledge of the financial counsellors, social workers and lawyers consulting during development, and other key sources such as the 2011 ASIC Financial Literacy and Behavioural Change Report and the 2015 ANZ Survey of Adult Financial Literacy in Australia Report. Obstacles to older persons taking self-protective action through financial planning and decision-making include inertia, which has been identified as a key obstacle to motivating people to act protectively in relation to their finances. Inertia may be brought on by the need to make increasingly important financial decisions in increasingly complex areas. Confusion exclusion is a preference to disengage from the financial market rather than being intimidated by a purchase, potentially due to poor understanding of financial products. Self-exclusion is whereas an older person voluntarily disengages from the financial market based on perceived capabilities and personal preferences. So, for example, older persons may tend to track finances closely, but less, be less likely to have examined financial investment. Social exclusion is a broad concept that includes marginalisation, economic deprivation and social disadvantage. Financial exclusion is most commonly defined as practices that prevent access to appropriate and affordable financial services and products such as a transaction account, insurance and a moderate amount of credit. It's also notable that within Australia's multicultural society, many cultures have different traditions around financial decision making, and this will necessarily influence perceptions about the need for information and advice. Service partners are encouraged to get to know and understand the cultural makeup of their communities and to speak to community leaders and members about how this might impact on financial decision making. When examining barriers to accessing free and independent financial information and advice alongside financial abuse, concurrent risk factors emerged, which may lead an older person to being both financially excluded and vulnerable to financial abuse. Financial exclusion is defined on this slide, and we have defined financial abuse earlier as incorporating a range of behaviours committed for the purpose of monetary gain from the older person and arising in relationship of trust. We have identified three areas where risk factors correlate between financial exclusion and financial abuse. We've previously discussed how individual perceptions differ from policy and research ones. For many older persons, financial abuse may not readily be recognised as a type of abuse, and this may make them ill-equipped to take self-protection action. Older persons may also be ashamed to talk about financial abuse and intimidated from seeking help. Perceptions about the need to make financial decisions and the utility of seeking out independent information and advice, along with the complexity of decisions, may be barriers to self-protective financial planning. Sally Naki also points out that people may choose not to 
engage with financial services when they do not feel they can afford financial products and services. The role of family is also significant, with family members likely to be the most influential group in shaping financial decision making. And we also know that family and close networks are most likely to commit financial abuse. This makes family a significant risk factor and also an influencer on whether a person will take steps to protect their finances or be supported to make autonomous financial decisions. Finally, social isolation and social exclusion with the concurrent experiences of exclusion, marginalisation, dependency and socio-emotional vulnerability are risk factors for both financial abuse and financial exclusion. All of these risk factors are very much focused on the individual and their immediate environment. The financial protection service is premised on the assumption that local services that are community-based and tailored to the needs of local communities are uniquely placed to mitigate this vulnerability. The, the Financial Protection Service aims to address these concurrent areas of risk by providing services that are age-friendly and adapted to the local communities with the aim of helping older persons to be as autonomous, independent and knowledgeable as possible, including about financial decision-making. This will assist older persons to change or expand their perceptions and strengthen their knowledge so they can act protectively even within strong family networks. The service also aims to increase financial resilience. Financial resilience incorporates concepts of financial literacy and financial capability. It's been defined as the ability of persons to access and draw on internal knowledge and capabilities and access external resources and services to make financial decisions should events such as financial abuse occur. Older persons can call upon financial resilience while still maintaining strong family bonds and exercise it independently if family members become a risk. The Financial Protection Service views financial resilience as a key service aim on the basis that financially resilient older persons will be less prone to financial abuse. The concept of resilience is a gro of growing interest in, the, in this sphere and within the context of the population of ageing. In Weir's fascinating New Zealand study, the Resilience Ageing Project, older persons revealed their views about resilience. Weir concluded that resilience may mean the ability to incorporate both vulnerabilities and strengths across a range of areas and timeframes, rather than being a narrow measure of success or failure. The study concluded that even those living with significant illness or hardship can be understood to be resilient. The concept of resilient enables us to recognise the strength and courage involved in acknowledging and negotiating one's personal and contextual vulnerabilities. Unlike more prescriptive ideas about successful ageing, which limit success to high levels of health or social connection, the potential of resilience as a concept is that it allows people living within age, with age-related disability or challenging social and spatial circumstances to be understood as ageing well. The service also aims to address social inclusion. Outreach is provided with the aim of increasing social inclusion by reaching into communities to connect older persons with supports and building up networks via referrals. This slide also illustrates how the Financial Protection Service fits within Queensland's age-friendly framework. Queensland is a self-determined age-friendly community where older persons are valued, respected and actively engaged in their community. Two important goals of Queensland's age-friendly community are achieved through the Financial Protection Service and these are detailed in the slide. The Financial Protection Service frames the needs of older people for financial products and services within an applied ecological approach. The founder of Applied Ecology, Braun von Brenner, was interested in the forces and conditions shaping human development in the actual setting in which human beings live their lives. Applied Ecology recognises individuals as embedded within larger social systems and describes the interactive characteristics of individuals and their environments that underlie outcomes, according to Golden and Houston. 
the Financial Protection Service aligns with an applied ecology thinking in a number of ways. In adopting an applied ecological approach, we are required to view older people in their contexts. In doing so, we're reminded that individual interventions such as the Financial Protection Service, which ask older persons to change their behaviour, such as taking steps to protect their financial future and recognising financial abuse, must not place all responsibility on the individual. Weir made a similar observation on his research on resilience, concluding that the most significant risk in using resilience as a measure of ageing well is that by focusing exclusively on individual characteristics and behaviours, we risk blaming individuals for not achieving resilience in later life. What our participants' engagement with the concept of resilience highlights is that we must pay adequate attention to the broader physical and social contexts and scales that underpin and foster individual resilience. We use conversation and adopt a person-centred approach as a tool for ensuring persons' conscience, older persons' conscience, values, beliefs, will, preferences and rights are being taken into account during service delivery. We also view transitions to retirement as both potentially stressful and as providing opportunity for development or non-development, as per banning. We accept there are diverse risks, factors from co for different cultural, religious, gender, faith and other communities. And through lo local service provision, we allow our approach to be adapted by service partners who are experts in their local communities. The delivery model also fits within an applied ecological approach. Bronf and Brenner recognise four levels of environment that impact on the individual, and these are depicted on the left. In the context of older persons, these encompass the individual who lives within a context made up of close co cohorts of friends and family, formal and informal support systems such as neighbourhoods, banks, churches, and financial, legal, and social support services. Financial decisions arise in and are influenced by the structure of the larger community in which people live. And advice and assistance services that are presently removed from the older person but may be linked to the cohort of close met network members and are shaped by broader cultural, political and economic forces. Within this framework, as depicted on the right, we look to use outreach to change the knowledge, belief and skills of individual. As per Golden, screening is used to take account for risk in the friends, family and carers, so for example those with informal and informal support systems, provide referrals to support financial decision making by developing connections between older persons within the larger community and uses education via the Financial Abuse Awareness Training Package, which aims to influence broader community advice and assistance services that may be presently removed from older persons by increasing their knowledge of financial abuse. Outreach is an individual intervention that targets older persons in their immediate setting and within their community context. Outreach is a person-centred approach that aims to take into account older persons' perceptions of the need for financial and legal information and advice and preferred methods of service delivery. Taking a person-centred approach involves supporting autonomy by building on the individual's strengths and honouring their conscience, values, beliefs, wills, preferences and rights. Autonomy is the ability to make choices and decisions, including with support if necessary, according to one's conscious values, beliefs, wills, preferences and rights. The Financial Protection Service aims to support autonomous decision-making and respect the autonomy of older persons. Screening assesses risk of financial abuse within relationships of trust, for example, existing social networks, the older person, their family and social context. The World Health Organization frames the concept of healthy ageing through the interlinking notions of intrinsic capacity and functional ability. Functional ability comprises the health-related attributes that enable people to be and to do what they have reason to value. It is made up of the intrinsic capacity of the individual, relevant environmental characteristics and the interactions between individual and these characteristics. 
Intrinsic capacity is the composite for all the physical and mental capacities of an individual. The Financial Protection Service acknowledged that erosions of autonomy, such as financial abuse, arise out of an interplay of risk factors and vulnerability in the older person, which is intrinsic capacity, and their environment, which includes functional ability. The service aims to respond to vulnerability to financial abuse by using screening as a tool for detecting financial abuse in relationships of trust. We also anticipate that both general and screening conversations are likely to reveal influences by family on financial decision making around key retirement decisions. Referral supports financial decision making by developing connections between older persons and the larger community. The key financial decision making areas we will focus on are accommodation planning, covering aged care and home care, both of which require knowledge of costs, subsidies, and for older persons to undertake future financial planning. Money planning, covering budgeting and expense management, which are forms of financial self-care and essential for the financial autonomy of older persons. Retirement planning, covering superannuation, equity release products, credit and loans in retirement as key areas of retirement saving, income and expense management. Estate and advanced care planning, which are important safeguards within an autonomy framework to make sure people have in place arrangements to suit their circumstances and needs. Co-living and family agreements, which are a particular area of risk in the financial abuse sphere and may impact on an older person's Centrelink entitlements. Money agreements covering loaning money, gifting money and agreeing to be a third party guarantor. Again, these are areas of risk and where information can help older persons to make protective decisions. Referrals will be provided to offer smooth assistance pathways to older persons who may need to make financial decisions in these areas and wish to obtain information or advice. Free referrals will be offered to older persons who do not have access to mainstream financial products and services because they cannot afford them. Where financial abuse is suspected, the older person will be referred in-house or to associated legal and social work support. The referral guide explains the referral pathways for financial, legal and social work referrals. Education is aimed at influencing broader financial advice and assistance providers by increasing their knowledge of financial abuse, including when it is being perpetrated by persons within the older person's extended network. The Financial Protection Service aims to increase knowledge of referral pathway service partners in key areas for improving outcomes of referrals for older persons and shaping the understanding of financial abuse in wider society. It also aims to guide outreach conversations towards emphasising simple financial rules of thumb, promoting older persons to consider financial information and advice within a framework of autonomous decision making and ensure they are supported within an age-friendly community by services and referral pathways.